All right, so this is a video over blood clotting. So three main steps of blood clotting. We have vasospasm, we have platelet aggregation, and we have the clotting cascades. So to talk about that, we need to know about how blood flows to some degree, and we need to know about the blood vessel layers. So look at the layers first. So all blood vessels have a tunica adventitia, which is the outer connective tissue layer, the tunica media, which is the middle layer, which is made of smooth muscle, which helps with vasoconstriction and vasodilation. The tunica intima now has two layers that are really important. One is the endothelium, which is actually lining the lumen. So this area in here where the blood is flowing is referred to as the lumen of the vessel. And then the tissue layer just between the endothelium and the tunica media is the basement membrane, or sometimes we just call it the subendothelial collagen. Now that's important because when there's exposure of the blood to the subendothelial collagen, there's different tissue factors in there and proteins that are going to start the blood clotting process. So that's how that works. Okay, so again, some blood vessels are just a single layer of endothelium, the capillaries. Other blood vessels have all three layers, but varying amounts of smooth muscle. Some are more muscular, some have more elastic fibers. That's all stuff we can talk about later. So First thing we're we'll talking about is how blood flows in the vessel. So we'll talk about how blood flows in the vessel. So normal blood flow is actually laminar. So the fancy word laminar just means layers. So it actually flows like layers. And guess where blood's flowing the fastest? So blood's going to be flowing the fastest in the middle, in the center, right? And as you move closer to the endothelium, blood's moving a little bit slower. And that's because of drag and friction and the red blood cells bouncing around and kind of dragging along the endothelium. Now, the endothelium is really important because it prevents abnormal blood clotting. So it provides this really smooth surface. It produces things like nitric oxide and prostacyclin, which actually prevent blood clotting and promote vasodilation. They're good for your blood vessels. So we like this nice laminar flow or layered flow. We need our endothelium to not just be intact, but to be functional. So endothelial dysfunction, or damaged endothelium, you're asking for trouble with the promotion of atherosclerosis or abnormal blood clotting and forming an arterial or venous thrombosis. That's laminar flow. So the opposition to laminar flow is actually turbulent flow. So if blood is going around like a sharp bend or something, there's, there's is blood turbulence that's normal, it's physiological um, in certain blood vessels based on the anatomy, but things like developing a plaque in the artery where there's a speed bump to go over, anything like that, that's going to create turbulent flow and turbulent flow. Let's say there was a plaque here. Well, then this would be kind of bumping over a plaque if we had a plaque in this area. Okay. And that'd be turbulent blood flow. So turbulent blood flow in the arteries can be caused by high pressures. Like when there's hypertension, especially when you get real, real high pressures and hypertensive urgency and emergency. And, um, <clears throat> we can also see when there's plaque development and something in the way abnormality or regularity in the blood vessel lumen. Okay. So back to blood clotting. So we have damage to our blood vessel wall, let's say here. So we're talking about physiologic clotting. So it's actually cut through the vessel. Surgery, trauma, whatever. So what's going to happen is this subendothelial collagen here is exposed to the blood. And when that happens, platelets are going to become activated. Okay, so one step back, we have the damage. The smooth muscle will contract. And constrict the vessel. What's the point of that? Well, if we constrict the vessel, we can potentially minimize blood loss. Let's reduce the flow to that area of the vessel and then reduce blood loss to some degree. But then right away, we have to activate these things called platelets. The platelets, remember, they're little fragments of megakaryocytes and they're floating around the blood. They don't do anything, right? But once they get exposed to subendothelial collagen, specifically something called von Willebrand's factor. So von Willebrand's factor. So von Willebrand's factor. This is just a protein in the subendothelial collagen. And there's a disease called von Willebrand's disease where there's mutations in that or there's not enough sufficient amount of von Willebrand's factor and it's bleeding disorder, right? And there's varying degrees. There's mild von Willebrand's to more severe types. But when this is exposed, these little platelets that are floating around, these little platelets are going to attach there, become activated, they actually release serotonin, they increase intra, well, I guess cellular or fragmentary calcium, and it causes them to change shape and stick together. We call that platelet aggregation. It forms a platelet plug, okay? Platelet plug. 
they get a leak in a pipe, you take some plumber's putty and just stick it on there temporarily. Is that going to hold and form a stable clot? No. But it's holding in the time being. Okay, That's your platelet plug. So exposure of von Willebrand's factor in the subendothelial collagen will activate those platelets. They release serotonin. There's an increase in intraplatelet calcium. They have a conformational change. They kind of change shape and swell up, and they link together. They're called aggregation. They stick together. So that's your platelet plug. All right? And that's going to stop the bleeding temporarily. Okay? Now, while that's happening, we've already exposed the subendothelial collagen to all those clotting factors we talked about before. So the clotting factors, there's a, there's a whole slew of clotting factors with numbers. We're going to look at the clotting cascades. And once that's exposed, that's going to start acting. But the platelet plug is a lot faster. So while this is happening, we're forming this stable, stable uh, fibrin clot, we call it. So it ends with fibrinogen converting to fibrin and then forming this actual mesh-like patch out of this protein called fibrin and actually patching the blood vessel. And then when that happens, well, we can actually heal the vessel. So we can heal the vessel with all the different growth factors because there'll be inflammation from the tissue damage. So endothelial growth factor, vascular endothelial growth factor, all those good things. And we're going to heal this up and eventually turn this back to a normal blood vessel wall. Okay. So that's extremely important to set the whole thing up. Now the next step, the clotting cascades, that's the whole big thing. We'll do that in the next video. So a little bit more about platelets. So again, platelets form the plug. One way of you know, potentially anticoagulating a patient. It's not really anticoagulating them, but a platelet inhibitors, right? So those are drugs like aspirin, drugs like Plavix. So they're going to bind to little receptors, basically or proteins on the surface of the platelets and inhibit their action. When we do that, the platelet plug takes longer to form. We don't get platelet aggregation like this. A lot of times we'll prescribe this to patients after they've had a stent placed, especially um, that's an indication for antiplatelet drug therapy. So when we talk about anticoagulants, well, we'll talk about the clotting cascades. That's when we talk about like warfarin, heparin, Xeralto, direct thrombin inhibitors, those types of drugs. They work on the actual clotting cascade and affect the clotting factors to some degree. So this is how blood clotting starts. We have vasospasm to prevent blood loss. The platelets get activated and aggregate because of von Willebrand's factor. So we need this von Willebrand's factor. And then the clotting cascades have already started. They just take longer. And that's what's going to form this stable fibrin clot. So we'll do that in the next video.